Hello and welcome back to the Audience Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Hewitt from Castos. I hope everyone out there is doing well and staying safe and relatively sane in these trying times. I know this is a a difficult time for for many of us with the COVID pandemic continuing and in some places getting worse. Uh, I do hope that everybody out there is staying safe and healthy and is prospering as much as we can in these times. A question we get asked a lot about both in our Castos Productions and our Podcast Motor brand is how to optimize the sound that people are recording, how to record great sounding audio every time, and how to do it without really kind of breaking the bank or kind of breaking ourselves emotionally. Because a lot of us look at recording podcast content as a difficult thing to do. And while it certainly can be, it doesn't have to be. And so in this episode, we're going to walk through a bunch of tips about how to record great sounding audio consistently and easily. All right, so let's dive in. The first one should be pretty self-evident, and it is to have the right equipment. Uh, We have a whole blog post that we'll link to in the show notes for this episode that goes through the equipment that we recommend and that we use. But suffice it to say, you need a good podcasting microphone. You need a pop filter or a foam cover to go over your microphone to kind of mute those plosive PNT sounds. Uh, You should have a boom arm or some kind of way to get the podcast up to the vertical level of your mouth. We talked about this in a previous episode, uh, and so I won't go through it all here, but really get a good sounding microphone. And if you're doing an interview type show, prepare your guest and enable them as much as you can for them to have a good microphone too. At the very least, they should have the earbuds that come with their mobile phone, you know, the Apple earbuds, if they have an Apple or an Android phone, kind of whatever kind of earbuds they have that have an inline microphone with them. Those actually sound pretty good. And one of our previous guests on this show used that as their only microphone. So I won't tell you which one, but I hope you can't tell because the sound was actually pretty good. The next one is talking about the environment that you record your podcast in. Uh, Hopefully you're able to get a a nice kind of small dedicated space for recording your podcast. A lot of us these days are recording at home or in our home office, and that's great. Uh, Typically you want a smaller room if possible and and something with a lot of uh, stuff and a lot of things on the walls, a lot of soft surfaces. If you look at like a recording studio that, that an artist might use, it's a small room. It has the foam panels on the walls, and it has kind of irregularly shaped walls and ceilings, maybe. All of these things reduce the vibration and echo and uh, dampen that sound that's bouncing around the room. And so as much as you can emulate that kind of same setup where you are, the better you'll be. Um, I think about kind of the best possible thing being to record in a closet um, because there's clothes hanging all over the walls, and it's a small space. So I don't think many of us will record in a closet, but if you talk to any professional voiceover artists, many, many, many of them record in something like a closet just because it's a great space. So as close as you can get to that uh, in a place that's comfortable and easy for you, the better. Uh, The other thing to do, especially as you look to the post-processing aspect of things, is to have kind of a baseline noise profile. So before you start recording the actual content of your episode, just pause for a couple of seconds and let the recording software pick up a couple of seconds of of kind of the background noise and the ambient sound profile in the room. You'll be able to use this to sample and filter against later using a tool like Audacity or Adobe Audition or Pro Tools, whatever your editing software is. But having a good kind of representative sample of what this baseline sound in the room looks like will go a long way towards reducing and filtering out that background noise later on in the editing process. We talked about getting the microphone up to the kind of vertical level of your mouth earlier, and I want to just kind of harp on this a little bit more. So you want to be pretty close to the mic. Depending on the mic you use, you might be closer or further away. I use the Audio-Technica ATR2100, which is a pretty quiet microphone, so I have to be pretty close. I'm about a fist width away from the microphone. Uh, If you're using a a more powerful mic or using something like a preamp, you can stand to be a little bit further away. The risk you run there is the further away you are uh, and the more sensitive your microphone is, the more things it will pick up in the room that are not your voice. So ambient noise, people coming and going outside your office, things like that. Uh, So that's just something to keep in mind there. The next thing is is to use headphones. So uh, if you don't use headphones and you're doing something like a remote interview where someone else is speaking 
and the sound would be coming out of your computer, there is a chance that that sound would be picked up by your podcasting microphone. And we certainly don't want that. So wear headphones. I use just the earbuds that come with my my iPhone uh, and they're perfectly fine. I usually just have one earbud in and one kind of listening to the background noise in the room and things that might be happening so that if uh, a, a loud car is going by or something, I hear that I can stop and restate what I just said. Whether I'm in an interview or doing a monologue like this, uh, it's just easier for me to go and restate something if there's a loud sound that's happening in my environment than it is to try and cut that out in, pre- in post-processing. The next one is something that I actually honestly have a hard time with is watch my breathing. Uh, we all are talking a lot, obviously, on podcasts, and to to kind of watch your breathing and try not to breathe into the microphone too much is a really important thing. I, I think this is hard. But uh, as much as you can kind of be conscious of this uh, without making yourself pass out as you're recording, uh, you'll just find that your life in post-processing is easier. The sound that you create for your podcast sounds better. Uh, and, and the whole kind of process of, of creating great sounding audio goes a lot smoother. Talking about doing interviews, uh, something that is, is a bit of a pet peeve of mine is people that talk over their guests um, during an interview. And this is just... Um, one, I think it's kind of rude. <laughs> I do it some, and I try to catch myself as much as possible, but uh, I very much try to let my guest talk. Um, they really are the reason that you have a podcast, if, if you have an interview-type show, or if it's just an interview format episode. Um, your guest is the spotlight and should be the reason that people are listening and should be the main kind of focus of content for the episode. So let them be that focus. Let them shine. Don't add your two cents over everything they say or clarify everything that they're 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 touching on um but really just ask great questions and let your guest run with it i think you'll find the content is much better if you're able to do that and and the flow of the episode will be much smoother not to mention your life and post-processing and editing will be so much easier because you don't have to cut out all those rude interruptions that you've made similarly talking about post-production is we really like to leave audio cues during a recording, if there are things that we want to touch on in post-processing, this is a, a suggestion we give all of our customers at Podcast Motor and Castos Productions is to leave audio cues. So if you're recording something and you you kind of fumble over a word, just say, hey, can we please take that last part out, audio editor, and just say that and leave it right in the, in the recording. The audio editor will be listening and they'll say, oh, that's a cue for me. I need to go take that last part out. Uh, And you can leave this for an editor if you're having someone else take care of the editing of your show or for yourself say, you know, hey, Craig, go take that last part out. That wasn't how I want to say it. I'm going to start now and and restate that and pause and take a second and then restate that whole kind of idea or phrase. And you'll find that that editing is a lot easier because you can take out these huge chunks of content instead of trying to splice together weird words that are intonated differently and have different kind of vocal characteristics. If you are in an environment that's not uh, particularly high quality or there's a lot of background noise or or something that's kind of just imperfect about where you're recording, it's a great idea to mute yourself when you're not speaking and when your guest or your co-host is speaking, particularly if you're using a tool like Squadcast or if you're on Zoom. uh, Muting is really easy, and it just makes that post-processing a little easier later on, not to mention especially if you have a, a guest on your show, they might get distracted by hearing things on your end that kind of take them off topic or or make them lose their train of thought. So mute yourself if you're not speaking. Uh, A lot of tools have like a a keyboard shortcut for muting yourself, like a space bar. uh, And that's a great way to kind of keep yourself muted unless you're speaking. Um, It's kind of a great way to do that on on autopilot all the time. Uh, The next one's kind of funny. It's a personal thing is to stay hydrated. I always have a, a glass of water with me when I'm podcasting and especially an interview show where you have nice breaks you can take. It's nice to take a sip of water. Uh, keep yourself hydrated. Uh, Doing this changes and kind of keeps consistent the vocal characteristics of your voice. Uh, And so, you know, just to have a a glass of water nearby, uh, I would give a tip on that is that if you're using kind of a a hard desk as the place you're podcasting from to put a book down or something that's kind of soft so that when you place your glass back down on the desk, it doesn't reverberate back and is picked up by the microphone. It's kind of a hard mechanical sound. Uh, so I have just a kind of a, a planner that I keep on my desk that I put my drink on. And, and so it doesn't make any kind of mechanical sounds that the microphone picks back up because those would be hard to, to filter out later in post-processing. 
Uh, I can't believe we're waiting to this late in the episode to talk about this, but this is really uh, one of the absolute things you have to do to record great sounding audio is to have a separate channel for each person participating in the episode. So whether you're using Zoom, they have a setting for this, or if you're using Squadcast or Zencaster, this is done automatically. Each person, whether it's you and a co-host or a guest, or you're on a panel and there's four or five people, each person needs to have their own channel. Uh, the reason for this, uh, it should be kind of obvious, is that the, the volume levels are different. The background noise is different on each channel. There might be an interruption on one person's side. And if that person isn't speaking, you can just cut that whole part out and let the other person or people that are speaking at that time kind of continue through with what they're doing. Whereas if everybody's audio was compressed into one channel and there was a dog barking or a baby crying or the garbage truck outside, you would have to try to filter that out while keeping what someone else was saying uh, in, in the recording at the same time. That is very difficult to do. Having this on multiple channels makes this so much easier. So we have a quick video in the show notes for this episode on how to do this in Zoom, especially since a lot of us are using Zoom these days. Uh, and so definitely kind of check that box if you haven't already, especially if you're using Zoom. Uh, and the last one is maybe a little counterintuitive, and it is to take a break if you need to. You know, whether you're doing a monologue type episode or you're doing an interview with a guest, it's okay to take a break. Uh, I'd almost always do this, you know, somewhere around two thirds or three quarters through the interview. I'll stop and kind of off air say, okay, you know, hey, Bob, how do you think things are going? Is there anything that you definitely do or don't want to talk about in the time remaining? Uh, did you want to go back and, and touch on any points we discussed already? You know, anything like that. It's great just to have like a pulse check with your guest to say, hey, every, you know, thumbs up, everything good. Anything you do or don't want to do here going forward, we still have another, you know, 10 or 20 minutes, whatever it is. And, and that's super easy to cut out afterwards. And then you, you know, assuming everything is good or they give you some feedback, you can take and continue the direction of the show from there. But this kind of pulse check partway through the interview is a great way to kind of make sure that your guest is happy with what's going on uh, and that you all get what you're wanting out of the episode. And the last thing here is kind of a content piece of advice, and that is to have some sort of idea of where you want the episode to go. Even for these solo episodes, I have an outline of a handful of things I want to talk about, and they're really just bullet points, and I, I kind of riff from there. But as we heard from the interview with the folks from Buffer, they script out the entire episode, kind of A to Z, pretty much every word they're going to say. And I know a lot of people that do that, and, and that's perfectly fine if that's your style and how you want the show to go. I, I think the more highly produced you want the podcast to be, the more I would tend to go in that direction. But if you want the episode to be a little more kind of spontaneous, I think it certainly is okay to just leave it as bullet points and just say, hey, I want to really make sure I touch on these five or 10 points through the course of recording this episode, whether it's a monologue like this or an interview or a co-host type show. Uh, just have some sort of idea of where you want to go and whether you want to kind of let the conversation take its natural course from there, that's fine. Or if you really want to script out, okay, within this one bullet point, I want to touch on these four things, or I'm going to script out exactly what I'm going to say, having an idea of, of really what you want to get out of the episode from a content perspective goes a long way towards maximizing kind of the utility of the time that you put in for the show. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, give an idea of some of the things that, that we do here and some of the best practices that we've seen working with customers at Podcast Motor and at Castos Productions to, to really optimize the podcast recording time that we're putting in, because this is all valuable time. We're all busy people, especially these days, and have a lot of other things going on in our lives. Following a lot of these best practices should help us get higher quality audio more consistently and with less effort every episode. Any questions, shoot us a comment in the post for this episode or in our Facebook group, Podcast Hackers. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.